And for example, in I think it was City of Revelation, he showed that if you take the pyramid inch megalithic yard Roman pace, da da da, English yard, mid Roman foot, something, a whole list of all the ancient sacred metrology, all the dimensions of the ancients, the cascade fit a golden ratio cascade. Oh, how pretty. <laughs> Very pretty. But then poor John, poor, poor John, who didn't really understand any physics, I don't think. I'm not picking on the poor guy. But he, he, he's trying to make his case. He is British. Oh, that guy is British. Hip hopper lip at all. He, his bumper sticker was, abuse your body while you still can. <laughs> um, uh, Roger Green visited him just months before he died, and he was able to consume whiskey to him under his table. I mean, they just, it was really great. But, uh, so, no, but John was really cool. We tried to get him a Sufi dance in my barn loft in western New York, and, you know, oh, we're British. We only hug our dogs and our horses. Thank you. I'm kidding. I'm picking on everybody. But, but po po poor John, you see, he is trying to make one simple, simple case. He is trying to say, the British are important. <laughs> and therefore, and therefore, the meter is bullshit. I mean, it's evil. <laughs> so his whole book is about the fact that the meter, the centimeter and the meter, are evil. And you know what? He's right. He is right. But the reason he gives is wrong. He says, oh, well, I got this cascade here. I got the Roman pace, megalithic yard, pyramid inch, and, and the English yard, and the Roman foot. I had this whole beautiful cascade of every ancient sacred unit, all fits golden ratio, and the meter doesn't fit. Therefore, we British are sacred, and you guys using the meter are evil. <laughs> and you see, if he had known one simple thing, this, the plot length, he could have actually made his case. But he didn't. So he didn't finish making his point. And you know what? This is how waves make a point. Have I made my point? It would be pointless otherwise. Yes, go ahead. It's very close to the problem. Well, <laughs> and you know, at the conclusion, at the conclusion of, of uh, Nassim Haramin's presentation to the Calgary group, and he says, oh, and the Planck length itself, 1.616 times 10 to the minus 33 centimeters, 1.618, that sounds like golden mean. Wait, that's scale. That's not ratio. Wait, scale is ratio. Ooh, it's getting so profound in here we can't stand it. That means everything's relative. Oops. <laughs> Even our case, it's the golden ratio. Well, you see, <laughs> that question might be a little too deep for this discussion. But the way you derive the, <clears throat> the Planck conditions, you take a simultaneous dimensional solution of the <clears throat> fundamentally occurring natural constants, the gravitational constant, the speed of light, and Planck energy constant. And you do an analysis in which you see in what unit of dimension could all three be expressed, called simultaneous dimensional solution, where you actually solve the equation based simply on the units of dimension. And when you do that, you derive Planck length, Planck time, and of course Planck energy. So. It is the only unit in which all three constants can be expressed simultaneously. Now, uh, but if you actually look at what that means, it could, it could mean that the only definition we have of scale is ratio. And that's too scary for most physicists. But what any physicist will say is there is no more fundamental unit of scale. And what any mathematician will say was there's no more fundamental unit of ratio. Oops. <laughs> well, that would be a great thing for you to discover. <laughs> well, I wrote a paper on that about 20 years ago, actually, on that question. Uh, Golden mean that emphasize prediction. But um, so Nassim was just catching up now. But actually, the thing, what we really need to do is invent a new unit of dimension based on Planck length. Now, this actually. This is very, very practical. You know, at the end of today and tomorrow, uh, we're going to go into how you put these into practice. And by the way, I said I do an outline of what we're doing to finish that outline. I finished today. Tomorrow's outline in the morning, biofeedback, heart harmonics, brainwave harmonics. And you get a chance to try it, hopefully, or whoever wants to, or we rotate and play around. So we do heart waves, brain waves, and have fun with, and see how golden ratio in brain waves, <laughs> and we're going to give a prize. Anybody who makes golden ratio in their brain waves tomorrow, you get a free something or other. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, tomorrow afternoon, 
is the conclusion of how do you put this into practice conversation. We discussed the hygiene, and a big part of that hygiene is the beautiful, fun, highly visual slideshows, pictorials of biologic architecture, geomancy, sacred architecture, geobiology, and we're working with people who are leaders in those fields around the world. So we got the best pictures. <laughs> so we conclude in a light note. But um, to finish this conversation then, um, you see that I took the Planck length times precisely powers of golden ratio, whole number powers of golden ratio. No, there's zero, 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 zero point. There's no possibility that this is an accident. There just cannot be. That a precise power of the golden ratio, one to keep that linking, power of the golden ratio produces precisely the radii of hydrogen when multiplied by Planck length. No, that it cannot be an accident. The only explanation is hydrogen exists because of this shape, a golden ratio cascade. This is 0 0.6181, 1 1.618, 2.618, golden ratio. This is the reason hydrogen exists, period. And this is how it makes the gravity, and this is how gravity is made in general. This is the beginning of our evidence that electric fractality is the cause of gravity. And by the way, my, the title of my paper I presented in Buddhist, Budapest six years ago with Nassim when we had the argument, before he got there about fractality, well, the title of my paper was Golden Ratio Fractality Causes Gravity. So I do make the humble claim of being the first to announce. <laughs> but anyway. I want to be the one. So I need to ask two questions. I'm sorry. I think I'm very well. Uh, there's another guy from Marlon Wolf. Have you heard of Marlon? I have heard of, but I don't know very well. Okay. So there's a writer who says that Om, okay, Om is the, and Om, for us, we don't know, is the, the scalar way. It's, the, it's different from electromagnetic uh, information. And the writer says everything came from Om. And Marlon Wolf, took a model of the electron and used scalar waves and solved it. And it, um, it's on Amazon if you want to uh, understand. Mm -hmm. But you'll find it absolutely fascinating because you were saying everything comes from electromagnetic waves. Mm -hmm. Or like gravity comes from electromagnetic waves. Mm -hmm. And he ensures that everything comes from scalar waves. Well, you know, I would... In my opinion, the word scalar and torsional, which are very common in non technical communities are a bad word for phase conjugation, and that the correct physics term would be phase conjugation. And to use Ohm as an example, here, when you pronounce ah, uh, this is ah, uh, well this is, first, this is the power spectra in thousands, so this is 500 to 3,000 hertz, and this is the dB, and this is time. So if you say ah, uh, and then e, it would be your, your tongue fills the center of your vocal cavity and cancels out the mid-range harmonic E. This is literally the shape of your tongue. So this is A, E, O, U, U. This is Om. Pronounced carefully. And if you, and I, we actually do this in 3D real time with a spectrum analyzer in the Korean group, but this is the graph of the energy density versus time of a properly pronounced I, So clearly what's happened is you've initiated perfected compression by what's in physics, this is called perfect damping. It's also called phase conjugation. And that induced spill point is the implosive point, Bindu point. And so the fact that he calls the scalar or torsional tells me he doesn't understand phase conjugation. Well, scalar and mono is very, very simple. Yeah. Scalar just means one pixel. Well, you see, that's actually, I think, unhelpful language, and not to pick on anyone here, but what's happening here is phase velocities are being accelerated between frequencies by ratio. And so some of the charge under that compression has been converted from compression to acceleration. So I, I don't object to the terms scalar or, or torsional, which are very common. However, most people who use those words do not understand phase conjugation, or they use more accurate language. That's my thought. I'll try to keep silent about this, but this one is for one last one. His model had 